a youth and camp Sunday theme right now. So uh, we had Pioneer Camp. Pioneer Camp was something that our church participated in and continues to uh, over at Camp Lone Star. So once a year, we get to have our youth group go down uh, to Camp Lone Star. And the theme this year was invited. So we're kind of uh, allowing our congregation to experience a little bit of camp uh, this Sunday, and then we're also having our elementary kids, middle schoolers, and high schoolers uh, more involved in the service. So uh, that they've been greeting, they've been ushering, and so we're very grateful for our youth. So that's where we're going to be going today. The theme is invited, and we're going to see how John, or in the gospel, according to John chapter 4, that Jesus invites a woman at the well really to experience something even greater than what she can imagine. So that's where we're going to be going today. Why don't we rise and greet those around you? Of high school youth could make their way up to the front. I invite the congregation to remain standing. We, we're beginning this service with our invocation. We are invited to be known by God, where we are fully grasping the fact that he sees our struggle and loves us no matter what. You may be seated. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We're having our youth that are going to be leading us in the opening song. This is an echo song, so follow along. The youth will be leading the congregation. I'll be leading everything, so. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Spirit. In the name of the Spirit. The three in one, the three in one. And we'll sing it again. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, in the name of the Spirit, the three in one, the three in one. I invite the congregation to please rise. So we continue with our confession and absolution. We're here, we are invited to be forgiven. Realizing that God can forgive even our biggest mistakes and that we can forgive others too, from Matthew 18. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Sacred your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will, in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and it's for his sake that he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, defend your church from all false teaching and error that your faithful people may confess you to be the one true God and to rejoice in your good gifts of life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with our scriptures where we see that we are invited into freedom, understanding our walk in the Holy Spirit and how that leads to a faithful life. You may be seated. This is from, from Psalm 66, 16 through 20. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is Mark 14, 66 through 72. And Peter was below in the courtyard. One of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming herself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Nazarite Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know, know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began to, again to say, to the bystanders, this man is one of them. But again, he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, certainly you are one of them. From the, Gal you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and swear, I do not know this man whom you speak of. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise out of respect for the words and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself did not baptize, but only his disciples, he left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water, Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink for me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, 
You have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You're right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I speak to you, I who speak to you am he. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I invite up all of God's children as Miss Meyer is going to lead us in the children's message today. So we invite up all of the children, and you can just be having a seat right along here in the middle. Take it away. How are you guys? You're good? Okay. Y'all have a good week so far? Yeah? Are you having fun back at school? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, it's okay. You'll only get one. It's okay. <laughs> so, I have a question for you guys. Have you ever been invited to something? No? Yeah? Maybe you've been invited to a sleepover or maybe even a birthday party. Maybe at Chuck E. Cheese. I like Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> so, 
maybe with y'all being old enough to experience those things, you've experienced some other things that aren't as happy and fun. Hmm? Maybe you've experienced feeling left out, you know? Maybe like your first day at school. I know, it's scary. Or maybe you struggle with making friends. Yeah, that's a hard one. Or you're trying a new sport and maybe you don't feel good enough to be on the team. That's really hard. So I'm here to tell you some really good news, okay? So we live in a simple world that causes those feelings. Because guess what? They're not true. Because God sees you, and he says you are invited to share his love and acceptance with those who don't know it or feel like they're part of his family. So I have another question for y'all. So how many of y'all went to camp this summer? I did. Yeah. You don't go to camp. Don't say that. Okay. So, you know how every year there's a different theme verse? Like this year, it was Psalm 66, verse 16. And that says, come in here, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for my soul. And guess what? That's a reminder that we're invited into God's family. Through his death, and resurrection, and through the salvation that he gives to us. So, I have a challenge for you guys, and then we're going to do something different, okay? So, I have a challenge. At the end, you're going to get one of these beautiful cards that Canva helped me, to help me make, okay? And you're going to fill it out, all of it, okay? Your parents might have to help you on the last one, okay? And then you're going to give it to Miss Chrissy, and she's going to give you a surprise next week. Okay? Sound like a plan? And then, I know, I know, too. And then, I'm also going to give you a bracelet. Okay? It's okay. And, so, your challenge is to give this bracelet to a friend at school who looks like they're having a rough day. And guess what? You're going to tell them how much Jesus loves them. Okay, and then guess what else you're going to do? You're going to pray for them. I know. So, give this back to Miss Malia. So, we're going to pray really quick, and then you guys are going to go back to your seat and get all your stuff, okay? So, we're going to stand up, okay, so we can pray differently, okay? And then, guess what? We're going to hold hands when we pray. We're going to pray, okay? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for inviting us into your love. Please help us to be bold and share that same love with the friends around us. Please help us have an amazing week at school. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And then uh, we're going to have the camp kids, so those that are in the camp. Well, first off, you've got to get your bracelet. Second off is that those who are in camp are going to be singing our song of the day, which is Come and See. So this was the camp theme song.
Thank you to our, to our camp kids, and also thank you, uh, Amy, for helping us in this first few songs. Uh, just so you know, after uh, this message that we're going to be able to have uh, Amy and then Josh, we're going to be installing them as our youth leaders. And so Amy is the point person to our uh, interim uh, minister of youth, and we're also having Josh as well. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, is there anything worse than being on the playground when you were a kid, if you were anything like me at least, where you were the one that was picked last? No one wanted you on your team or no one wanted you on their team. Or maybe as you get a little bit older that you're working on some projects in the workplace and is there anything worse than just feeling unwanted, maybe unloved? Well, I think that the woman in John chapter 4, the woman that Jesus encounters, she certainly knows what this kind of social um, ostracization, that she just felt very disconnected from anyone else there. She knew the scorn of so many other people. She knew the embarrassment and the shame. And yet Jesus is the one who then goes to her. Let's take a look at our text today. And the text is this, that Jesus is the one who invites her into this conversation. So let's read our text today, and then we'll look at uh, the greater story. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you're the one who initiates this conversation. You're the one who starts it. You're also the one who then uh, invites us to experience your living water. This water that uh, is, is something that not only um, gives us true repentance, but gives us life and salvation. Lord, for all of those who are longing to have your water of life, we ask that you can invite us to, just like you do this woman. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our God. Amen. So you might know this story, but I want to just remind you that this is a woman who, like I said, she knows the kind of social shame that uh, comes with her maybe way of life, with her lifestyle. In fact, she was even willing to uh, face the heat rather than facing the scorn from other women or other people. Why was she there about the sixth hour? So that would have been about 12 noon, the hottest part of the day. Why is it that she's the one who would get water, not in the morning or in the evening with the rest of the women? Why does she wait until the hottest part of the day when no one else is there to get water? And the answer is that she would rather risk getting a heat stroke and be inconvenienced greatly rather than having to face the look and the scorn of other people. So she's used to being by herself. And Jesus asked her something, and he asked her to give him a drink. Now maybe it might seem a little demanding at first that why is it that he would say, give me a drink, but it's not a commandment by itself. But first off, he's talking with her. That's the thing that surprises her, that why would someone who's Jewish be talking with her who's a Samaritan? See, Samaritans were those that are maybe kind of the sellouts of the Jews. They're the ones that lived right next to the Jews, just a little bit to the north. And you'd have to go back hundreds of years ago in history. But in many ways that their fathers and their ancestors are also Jewish people, that they would have had the same bloodline and relationship in the ancestry as Jacob and Joseph and so forth. But they also uh, go back to people who were willing all too easy to give up their doctrine, their way of life, even their own God, out of convenience. So they're half-bloods, maybe, if you will, that they're kind of half-bloods, or maybe they're kind of sellouts. So sure, part of their ethnic identity and their ancestries 
go back to the true God, but they also are very influenced by unpure and maybe uh, people that were not worship God. So they're partially right in their religion, if you will. And as you can imagine, that that did not make many people happy, uh, being kind of a, a middle person or kind of a sellout. And yet Jesus, rather than taking the long way back home, is that he goes right into this territory. Not necessarily enemy territory, but certainly hostile. And he sees this woman alone, and he goes up to her and invites her into this conversation. Can you give me a drink? And, and she's very uh, taken aback that why would a Jew be talking to a Samaritan, and yet he's the one who does this. And so what does he do? He invites her to offer a new life. That he says this as they're talking about being out there in the, the heat of the day, drawing this water, and he says, whoever drinks of this water that I give him will never thirst again. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So that what Jesus has to offer, unlike the water that she has, is that he is actually able to offer her water. And this kind of water is a water of a new life, of a new way of living. And that to the point that you never have to come back here to experience what goes on every day there. And so her response to this is, well, yes, please, anything but to always keep coming back to the same spot because what does the well represent to her? Not only is it just another chore and something inconvenient to do, but it's about her identity. Every day that she has to go out there by herself, alone, going out to this well, and yet Jesus offers her a different life. And she says, yes, please, if you have this water so I don't have to come back here and experience the shame and the guilt that she gets, yes, please. But how is that done? This new way of life comes from within as well, where he invites her to repent. And Jesus says to her, go and call your husband and come right here. Well, she doesn't have a husband. In fact, she actually has five husbands because she's had a very messy life and the one that she's with now is not her husband. So the way to have this new life to the point that you don't necessarily need to keep coming back to this old way of life, to this old well, that not only means that you gotta constantly keep drinking of this water, this physical water, but really is that it represents her shame and her guilt and her loneliness. All of that can be taken away because now the water that she can experience in, in this new baptismal water, can kind of well from within. But how does that happen? It happens through repentance. Jesus doesn't say this to be mean. He doesn't do this just as a way to shame her. The other women shame her. But he's calling her to repentance. If you want to live differently, then live differently than the way that she is now. And then that gets to worship. And Jews and Samaritans had different places to worship. Do we worship on this mountain or that mountain? And we can argue about that. But Jesus is saying that there's going to be an hour that's coming. And it's already here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. So it's not about trying to find the right spot to worship, but it's how we worship and really where our heart is in worship, which is done in spirit and in truth. He was inviting her to worship. At our church camp, uh, we had our members, our own family, our uh, youth, and our children got to go down to camp and they got to worship in spirit and in truth. And so as they were invited, as uh, God invited them and sought them and drew them to worship. I want to hear from one of our campers of what it was like to worship. So uh, one of our campers, Micah Belton, well, he was there, but also that there was different ways and different times to worship. There's no mountains in LaGrange, but Micah, tell us what worship life was like at camp.
Okay, so first of all, I want to open with a Bible verse um, that was found in the play, my favorite spot to worship at camp, and it is 2 Samuel 6, 14, uh, and it says, And David danced before the Lord with all his might. Um, this is at a place called the Hay Barn, uh, where we do what we call song time. And the song time is a time for all the campers and staff to go absolutely crazy worshiping God. And that is just so much fun to me. Just see like every single age group there just getting up and dancing and singing. And even if they don't know the songs, they're still dancing and trying to follow along. Um, and probably one of my favorite parts of that is seeing day campers who are like five to ten years old about. And they sometimes can outdance you. And it's kind of humbling sometimes just to see that. Um, and... That was probably the best way I can think of that I was invited to worship at camp. Thank you. And then uh, Jesus invited her to have a, a different way to worship that really uh, allowed her to share. And so Malia, if you want to tell us about uh, what it was like or some ways that you've learned how to share God's word. At camp, I was invited to share during Bible study. So while we were studying the Bible, diving into God's word and going through different verses, we were asked questions throughout the, like, the study to answer. And some of them get pretty personal sometimes. So every time I would have Bible study, like not really many people would answer. But as people start answering and start being vulnerable and talking about their experiences with God and experiences in life and how we can apply that to the study, um, people are invited to share and just show part of themselves that they weren't able to before. So I was invited to share with Bible study, and it was a very opening and humbling experience for me. So, Thank you. And what I love about uh, this text here is that, as Malia was saying, first off, you got to know, you got to know the Bible. But really, what is the Bible? And as we get to open up the pages of scripture. It's all about Jesus and how God's story becomes alive for us. And for this woman, that she got to experience something that maybe we don't. And that is, it's not simply about God, but that she got to see God there in the flesh for her. And the woman, after encountering Jesus, and remember the whole reason why she was there is to get water and then go back home, and she'd have to do this day after day, again and again. But when the woman encountered Christ in a way that really transformed her, that she even left the jar there, and she went away into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? That she still has some questions, but she was encountered by God. And so our kids got to encounter God in worship. Our kids at camp got to encounter God through his word. And that's still the same way that we interact with God today. The woman interacted with God by God seeking her and coming to her and encountering her. And by doing so, this allowed to repentance, which allowed to worship. And how could she not help but share what she has seen and what she has heard. No wonder that Psalm 66, that was the theme for the camp, said, come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. So we get to be doing that as well, that just as you share so many things that you love and as you are so excited to tell about other people, but I think what we can do, maybe my encouragement for you is to think of, is there one person that's on your heart? Is there someone who doesn't know the joy that you have? The woman in our story, they cannot help but tell about what they have seen and what they have heard. That uh, our, our kids for camp, when they got back, that they were so excited and they, all they wanted to do is just tell the, the stories. And as I was putting this together, that you, you can still hear that they have such an amazing time, not just with the fun and activities and the, the camaraderie that they had, but how they really got to experience God and they got to experience his word there. 
They can't help but speak of it. So we do get to be like that. We just get to tell our friends, hey, you got to come and, and hear what it is. Uh, all of us who, who love and all of us who fear God, and we can tell what he has done for us. We know that, that Christ, um, he encountered this woman, and he invited her to live differently. And that is really through, reprint, through repentance that then leads to worship, and now we too share what God has done for us. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep and guard your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Today's also a special Sunday because we get to give thanks to God for uh, bringing Josh and Amy Velton. So I invite Josh and Amy if y'all want to come up here. So they've been longtime members of our congregation. And now they're going to be able to bless our congregation in a, a very specific and unique way. Uh, Amy is our uh, interim director of youth and families, but we're having Josh as also one of our leaders, and he's going to be helping her. So Amy is the official point person, but of course, uh, they're working together as a team. We're very grateful to have you guys on board, and um, I just wanted to, you know, definitely express my gratitude on this. Uh, this is a, a position, so it's our interim position as we are uh, in the process of hiring a full-time minister of children, youth, and families. And we broke that position up into two part-time. So we have Chrissy Gilbert, who's doing children's, and then we have Amy and Josh that are doing our youth. And youth are uh, primarily high school, by the way. And, well, I guess, not meaning to get too ahead of ourselves, but if you're interested in youth, or if you are a youth, and if you're saying, hey, we ought to have some kind of information meeting after uh, church today, then you are in luck because there is an information meeting after church today. But um, so thank you. Th thank you both uh, for this. And now we get to officially uh, welcome you into this position. Josh and Amy, you are here to be uh, brought in as our minister of or interim director of youth and families. I want to read to you one of the passages from Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 17, where the Apostle Paul writes, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called into one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving you thanks to God the Father through him. I invite both of you to come stand right over here, be facing me. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I install you as interim ministers of youth and family in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Lord God Almighty, even as you bless your servants with various and unique gifts of the Holy Spirit, continue to grant us the grace to use them always to your honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I want to share one of my favorite Bible verses with you all, as we can use this as a benediction for this installation. And that's the way that Paul ends 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So 1 Corinthians 15 is... The congregation, as you might know, that it's all about the resurrection of Jesus. And the way that Paul ends that chapter, he ends up with these words. Go in the name of the Lord. Be immovable, steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Can we give thanks to God for this? Thank you so much, guys. Wonderful to have you guys. God bless this to you.
God's blessings. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very honored uh, to welcome them into this position. We'll go now to our offering. And so uh, with that, we're having our youth that are also going to be uh, leading us in the song. And uh, now's the time that we get to prepare our hearts as well for the prayer of the church. And we use this as a time to, um, to give generously to our very generous God. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are known, give us a true faith that we would honor you not only with our lips, but serve you faithfully with all our heart, mind, and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve us from rejecting your commandments for the doctrines of men. By your Spirit's aid, lead all Christians to keep your commandments in thought, word, and deed, honoring you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, hear our prayers for our nation and its leaders, for all civil servants, and for those whose work imperils them for the sake of their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in his earthly ministry, your son healed the sick and comforted the hurting. Grant healing and peace to those taking treatments, to the ill or injured, to the lonely and the imprisoned, to all in need of our prayers, including those that we name silently in our hearts now. In our special prayers, we want to pray for Bob, who has health issues. Also for Sandra Noth, for her family, the loss of her son, Sam, and that her daughter's father-in-law also passed away last weekend. 
for Dave Frauheiger and his family as he is traveling and is at a funeral currently. Also, Lord, for strength and patience for families who are going through change and the challenges that are there. Lord, we also pray for Samantha's grandmother who is in a hospital. For these and these other prayers, we lift them all before you, Lord. And into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, keep us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We go now to our time of the Eucharist for communion as we are invited into joy, focusing our hearts on the goodness of God and how we, even in bad times, can rejoice in him. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.